I was fortunate enough to be able to literally travel the world. Why I decided to fly, how I got in with one try, and that training school was intense. Hey there lovely souls, welcome back to my channel. My name is Febby and I'm here to share my stories and experiences and my goal is to help and encourage people to embrace their own journey, be comfortable working on their own timeline and feel less alone in the process. Today I want to talk about my time working as a cabin crew with Singapore Airlines. But before we get started, I'd like to share an affirmation that has been my jam lately. It is to choose courage over comfort. I think we all could use a little reminder to be courageous, to better on ourselves, to just go for it. And this is something that I like to tell myself too every time I am crippled with self-doubts or feel afraid of going after what I want. Now let's get into my flying journey. So I used to work with Singapore Airlines as a cabin crew for four years and during those four years I was fortunate enough to be able to literally travel the world and went on a self-discovery journey. I do think that I'm the type of person who constantly reinvents herself and work on myself and I'm a big self-growth, personal growth goal. But I do think that those four years working with the airline does shape me into where I am today and it did serve as a stepping stone in my life. In today's video, I want to give you guys the lay of the land um, and I want to start with why I decided to fly, how I got in with one try and the practical tips and tricks in terms of the preparation that I did to go about the recruitment process. SQ is pretty well known for its extremely competitive process at least from my experience i remember for me at least 400 people went for the recruitment process or for the selection process and at the end only five percent out of those people got selected to move forward to the medical checkup stage which is the final stage um, during my time so without further ado let's get started this idea initially came about when a senior that I know of from high school was flying with another airline and I was just following her on social media and I thought to myself, this looks like a pretty cool lifestyle and at that time I was in my final year of my undergrad and I was looking to get into the corporate world. In fact, I was already in the corporate world, I was working with a global cosmetic company and I sort of was able to see where this would take me however at that time I kind of felt like I wanted to do something else I wanted to see what's up there I wanted to do something that would allow me to travel would expand my horizon and something that's financially viable that's how I made up my mind to go and apply for a cabin crew position with Singapore Air in terms of the recruitment, it was a 10-step process for me. I remember that the end-to-end -end process took me seven months to clear, but I also wanted to say that it's not a common um, timeline. I did have some hiccups towards the end, especially from a medical checkup standpoint that kind of delayed my process or my application a little bit. I think in general, it would take about three months for most people but for me it took seven months which was which felt like forever <laughs> honestly and those 10 steps cover from all the way from english to communication to problem solving to catwalking they want to see how you walk to physical tasks such as being able to reach the the baggage or the compartment um in the plane that is the gist of the recruitment process and once i got in i needed to attend a training school and that training school was a three and a half month training and i did that nine, monday to friday eight to four um for three and a half months four months that training school was intense. It covers from safety to service to makeup to the language and terms and choice of words that you would use on board to support your passengers or engage your passengers. 
And I remember halfway through, or more so after 70% completion of the training, I would go for a supernumerary flight or like a trial flight for me to get a first-hand experience on board. And I remember that my first flight ever with as a cabin crew was to Tokyo, Japan. And that was my first flight. And then I remember I was so nervous. I had no sleep.、Um, I was so tired, and because it was my first flight, I had not got used to the onboard air yet. So I was down with skin rashes, and it was really bad because of how dry the cabin air was. Yeah. After that, then I completed the rest of the training, and then after four months, then I was a fully trained crew. So that was a glance into the recruitment process and and the training period. Now let's talk about the preparation that I did to go about the recruitment process. So after I knew that I wanted to give this path a try, and I was pretty set in stone actually in terms of what I want to do after graduation, which is to be a cabin crew. So I went to do my research, which is my first step. So I googled everything in terms of. Searching for cabin crew blogs or people posting about their recruitment experience with Ask You and the things that they learned or the advice that they would give to other people, like like what I'm doing now.、Um, I really went down the rabbit hole when it comes to my research. I even cribbed people on Instagram, like crew was flying and 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 likes to share and post things on social media to help me gain some insight into the crew life. So. That's the first thing that I did. Then the second thing that I did was to find useful forums for me to join that、um, consist of aspiring cabin crew or people who are already in the industry who are willing to share their tips and tricks in terms of how to go about the recruitment process, what you need to do to prep, the most sought after skills that would help set you up for success as a cabin crew, and. All that jazz, and the last thing that I did was to search、um, on YouTube, just like maybe some of you who stumbled across my video right now. That's what I did to to understand what it's like to be a crew, or even how to go about the recruitment process, and really understand if this is something that I want to do. Because let's be real, nothing in this world is perfect. There's always pros and cons, and I think. It's really, it really comes down to what kind of shit sandwich that you're willing to eat. I really like this question. I remember I, I read this question from a book that is written by Mark Manson. I think he's the author of a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I can't remember if this question is something I stumbled upon. While reading that book, but I'm pretty sure that I came to know this question from him. Okay, that is all I have for today. In my next video, I'm going to be sharing the pros and cons of flying in my experience and what I learned from that chapter of my life and why I decided to quit. So, if you think that you could benefit from this flying series, please subscribe to my channel and. Say hi to me. Leave a comment down below, cause I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. And also, hope you find this video useful. All right, thank you. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.